Number 77, featuring one of the best computer role-playing games ever designed, R.L.J. Hendrick's Darklands. Welcome to Darkland. Welcome. Arnold Hendricks' Darklands is a cult classic computer role-playing game. It's amazingly ambitious and sophisticated, especially for the time. This was released in 1992. Only for DOS, there were plans to release an Amiga port, but they sadly fell through. Uh, the designer of this game, Arnold Hendrick, had, had a lot of experience designing uh, military simulators for Microprose. You've probably heard of some of his titles. He also worked with Sid Meier on Pirates, a game that we uh, reviewed earlier. So he had a lot of experience with strategy and tactics, and that really shows up strong in Darklands. Now, there's a lot of uh, interesting things about Darklands that really sets it apart from other computer role-playing games then and now. Uh, probably the most obvious is the setting. Uh, whereas something like 99.9% .9 of role-playing games are set in Tolkien-esque, uh, Lord of the Rings-style fantasy settings, uh, Darklands is set in a historical time period, uh, 15th century Germany, or to be, more, uh, to be more accurate, the Holy Roman Empire. Now what's a little twist here though is that it's not historically accurate. Instead, uh, we, are we are seeing this, um, this time period as it was seen or believed to be by the people who lived then. Uh, so the mythical creatures they believed in, the superstitions and so on are here uh, represented in the game and they're treated as reality. So that makes for some very interesting, um, a very interesting mix of history and literature. Now another interesting thing is instead of the a uh, tired old Dungeons and Dragons inspired spell system, magic. Uh, here we have a magic system based entirely on alchemy. So you're finding ingredients and recipes and mixing uh, really powerful potions that can do all manner of things. It's really very interesting. And we also have a, a priest system, uh, or cleric system based on appealing to many, many different Christian saints. So it's quite a bit of uh, history here. History meets fiction meets good old computer role-playing games. <laughs> this is a, an amazing game. It's very sophisticated and there's a lot to talk about. So without further ado, here is Darklands. Now I would certainly recommend any beginners to just use the pre-made party. There's a party of four uh, well-balanced adventurers available and it's, you can get into the game quickly. But I thought you might like to peek under the hood here with me and look at the character creation screens. Now this is not using the AD&D uh, standard system. Instead we've got something that looks a lot more like the uh, Traveler or the uh, Dark Eye system, if you're familiar with that. Now what's really important are these uh, stats here. This is Endurance, Strength, Agility, Personality, Intelligence, and Charisma. And these will be relatively hard to change in the game compared to skills. So you really want to focus on these and how they're affected by your background and choice of occupations. Now as with that Traveler system I mentioned, 
Here, you, when you create a character, you begin at birth, you choose a family type for the first 15 years, and then you can have them do various occupations for five years. And depending on the choice of occupation, it will affect your stats and allow you to put points and skills more efficiently. So you really need to think about what type of character you want to create. Now you start to get hit with penalties after 30, so you don't want to have too old of a character starting out. So I suggest keeping him in his uh, 20s. And here we go. I've just selected a quick party so we can get into this. And as you can see, the game begins with a conversation among your characters. They have reached a point in their lives when their ordinary day-to-day -day activities no longer satisfy. So they've decided to take to a life of adventure. Now, there's not a lot to do here at the beginning. Uh, there's not a lot of story yet. The main objective at this point is just to acquire fame, fortune, uh, upgrade our equipment. You know the drill. Another interesting thing about this game is that, at least in the city, everything is menu-driven. So unlike uh, games like Bard's Tale and Pool of Radiance, we're not going to be running up and down the streets. Which uh, saves a little time and <laughs> definitely easier on you if you're not a very good with maps. Uh, we can try to talk to the people here in the end, but I didn't learn anything useful. This might be something later on as I get more uh, fame and people skills. <laughs> might be able to glean more valuable information. Now here's the characters, and you can see I have my armor and weapons displayed there. Your characters come with uh, better or worse equipment depending on how wealthy their families are. And you need to figure out, too, who is going to be your alchemist and who will be your priest. In other words, who has the most al alchemical training, who has the most religious training. Uh, your religious people will be able to pray to these saints, and they use divine favor to do that. That's that yellow bar. And all the saints have different advantages they can bestow on you, but sometimes uh, they don't do anything for you. Uh, now let's take a look at the al the, my uh, alchemist here. He can make four potions at this point. I'll have to find more recipes. Now the clue book says that you can make a lot of money by uh, buying up the ingredients and then selling the potions at a profit, but it takes time to make potions, and it, again, there's a chance that they won't uh, you won't be successful and you'll just waste everything. Another thing I should mention is that the, the uh, different towns and cities will have different ingredients available, different recipes. Uh, so there's, of course, a need to travel around and learn as much as you can. Uh, this is one of the main markets. And later I'll be able to get missions from the Fugger banking offices and the Medici's. Uh, there's lots of different ways to get assignments. But unfortunately, at the beginning, your reputation is too low to uh, mess with us. Well, one thing we can do as we're waiting for sundown is visit the church. Uh, the churches have a lot of valuable things to offer. Uh, specifically, you can learn about different saints. And as I mentioned before, praying to the different saints will confer different benefits. So it's worthwhile to travel all around, uh, learn about as many saints as you can. Um, all the characters can learn about saints, but you get better results with higher religious training. Now, a big part of this game is managing your very finite resources. Even when I pray to the saints, I have to determine how much divine favor do I want to spend. Uh, typically, these prayers will fail. The saints will not be impressed unless I spend quite a bit. But it takes a long time to recharge and can be expensive. So, again, it's a question of how bad do I want to pray to that saint. And here we go. It's time for combat. Now, after nightfall, you can slip around the side streets and try to find thieves who are preying on the townspeople. You just want to avoid the main street so you get stopped by the city guard and have to pay a penalty for violating the curfew. Now this game uses real time with pause uh, that you may be familiar with uh, from games like Baldur's Gate. The idea is you can pause the action at any time to issue orders. And the orders here uh, can range from the very simple to the very complex depending on the type of enemy you're facing. Uh, these bandits are very easy to defeat. I've just uh, ordered by my party there just to attack normally with melee. Uh, later on I'll show you how to use some ranged attacks. Now of course you want to keep a close eye on these energy bars over here. Uh, the blue bars uh, represent endurance, the green bars are your strength, and the yellow bars divine favor. And the little uh, double bars that appear sometimes, that's the statistics of the people that they're fighting. So I can see how well the combat is going that way. Uh, strength, uh, the green bar there, will go down if you get wounded, and that's a lot harder to replenish than your endurance. 
So you want to keep an eye on both of those, and when your guys get beat up too much, go back to the inn and rest. I also managed to improve some of my skills. A lot of the skills here uh, will rise as you use them. So if you use edged weapons, you'll get better at that. If you use uh, crossbows, you'll get better at ranged attacks and so on. So I managed to improve my reputation a little bit. It is time to lather, rinse, <laughs> and repeat. Now, there'll be quite a bit of grinding here at the beginning uh, before we're ready to venture out into the wilderness. And once you're able to actually leave the city, that's when the game really gets interesting, at least for me. There's all sorts of hamlets, villages, and cities to explore, and many of them have special things you can do. Uh, plus, you will have uh, many random encounters on the road, and these can be quite interesting. Now, what's happened here is my healer, or my priest, has fallen into some muck, and he's uh, about to drown. And you can see I have all these different options of ways to get him out. If I had a rope, I could try to haul him out that way. I'm going to try to pray to get him out. Unfortunately, it didn't work the first time, but I have a little more divine favor left, so I will try it again. Oh, please, St. Finian. <laughs> I'll let this guy sink into the mud now. Come on. And there we go. A miracle has occurred. Let's go check out this hamlet up here. Now, if you pay attention to the text, you might learn things about these villages. Uh, for instance, um, if I talk to the mayor of the town, he seems uh, fair enough. But then if I visit the church, I notice that there's something peculiar going on. Now, what happens when I go to confession is that this village, for whatever reason, is sacrificing animals and saying their prayers backwards. So I think it's time we had a, another chat with the mayor. And as we suspected, we've uncovered a den of satanic villagers. Oh, these guys are listening to Black Sabbath and Iron Maiden and God knows what else. We have no choice but to kill them. Now, after I've managed to defeat these knights in Satan's service, I'm told that they are planning to get revenge on me October 31st in a place around Gosler. So then I find this uh, this altar, and you see I've got lots of options again, but I think I'm going to try to fight this demon. To do that, I'll have to summon him. I believe the easiest way is with a Windows installation disk. And it's time for battle, and this will be a fairly tough battle, and uh, these guys have been upgraded a few times. Uh, what I want to do is start by throwing some javelins at them, and that's a strategy I learned about from the clue book. And then uh, once he gets close enough, my guys will automatically switch to melee. Now, this was a pretty tough guy, and I needed to uh, implement a few strategies. Uh, for one thing, when my uh, lady there, Gretch, Gretchen, takes too much damage, I'll switch her into parry mode so she won't take as many blows. You can see it's taking uh, quite a while to knock this demon's uh, strength down. But there he goes. He's almost dead. Now, of course, a CRPG lives or dies by its combat system, and I'm happy to say that the designers have done a, an excellent job here with this real-time with pause mode. Now, if you want to play this game, I would strongly suggest uh, tracking down the uh, the box just so you can get this manual. So well over 100 pages and very nuanced. Arnold even included a few pages of designer notes so you can really get an inside perspective on how they made this game. And that's all for this episode of Match Hat. I sure hope you guys enjoyed that. As always, if you did, then leave me some comments, give me some feedback, maybe you have some suggestions for games you'd like to see. You can also visit us at armchairarcade.com where we have a great community of retro gamers and vintage computing enthusiasts. I know you like the site, come check it out. If you'd like to support the show, uh, you can buy some games from goodoldgames.com. Those are DRM free games. You have to use my link, though, in the uh, description of this video, or I won't get any of <laughs> the proceeds, and that wouldn't be so good. You can also buy an official Matt Chat t-shirt, and if you Ooh. make a YouTube video and post it of yourself wearing this shirt and send it to me, uh, then I'll happily send you some signed bookmarks. I know you would enjoy that. I thought I would leave you with a quotation from Charles V, one of the Holy Roman Emperors during the period of Darklands. I speak Spanish to God, Italian to women, French to men, and German to my dog. All you Germans out there, go find Charles V.
kick his ass for me. <laughs> See you guys next week.